and they are going to garnish your wages automatically. They are going to take your tax return. They are gonna take any government payments you might get like disability, social security. They could even sue you. The list goes on and on and on. And there's no statute of limitations on federal student loan debt. So like this can happen forever. Student loan payments will resume in October. This can come as a massive shock for so many Americans given that there's been a student loan payment pause for over three years. There is a growing wave of people online asking the question, well, what if I just don't pay back my student loans at all? Well, big questions like this are always better with really smart friends, so I thought I'd answer this one with Robert Farrington. Robert is a millennial money expert and the founder of The College Investor. He's on a mission to help millennials get out of student loan debt and start building wealth for their future. When Robert isn't supporting millennials with money advice, he's spending time with his wife and two kids in San Diego. Welcome back to the show, Robert. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Well, you and I spend a lot of time together online, so I figured maybe we could just do this uh, interview here, and I know we're going to see each other soon in New Orleans for some fun, so great to connect with you now. Let's let's answer this question right away. Let's say I have like $30,000 of student loans. Maybe I'm using this example because I did have $30,000 of student loans back in the day, and I just decide to never pay them back. What will happen? Dude, uh, not paying your student loans is probably the worst financial mistake you can make. There is a lot of talk about this right now. And if you go on Reddit or you go on other sites and people are like, I'm just not going to pay. What are they going to do about it? Well, let me tell you what they're going to do about it because uh, it's not pretty. Um, well, first off, let's say like right now we're in a unique situation that they are giving all borrowers a 12 month grace period before you have to start. So let's just say that right now it's not going to start happening to you until October of next year. But, you know, we all know how time can get away from you and you think that I'm going to get on next month, I'm going to start next month, and all of a sudden your time's up. Well, this is what's going to happen is first off, uh, you're going to end up delinquent and in default on your student loans. So your information is going to be sent over to the Department of the Treasury, and you're just going to end up in this black box of a system called the Default Resolution Group. And they are going to garnish your wages automatically. They are going to take your tax return. They are going to take any government payments you might get, like disability, social security. They could even sue you. The list goes on and on and on. And there's no statute of limitations on federal student loan debt. So, like, this can happen forever. And then you think, well, you know, they're just going to garnish my wages and my tax returns, and eventually it'll get paid off. Well, guess what? They're going to add 20% a month in collection fees, mm. and you're still going to pay the interest and late fees and all this other garbage. So guess what? Your loan balance will grow far faster than any garnishments and tax offsets and all that will ever do to help you. So I promise you, you will end up worse off financially with your student loans. But then the other kicker is, right? What are we trying to avoid here? Maybe a $300 a month payment. I'm just going to throw it out there. Guess what's going to happen to the rest of your financial life? Everything's going to get more expensive because your credit's going to tank, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to report you. Everything's going to be delinquent. You know, it's going to be harder to rent an apartment. You're never going to buy a house. All your car loans, things like that are going to go up in price because you're not going to get the best rates. If you want something like a, a new cell phone, guess what? They're going to make you put a deposit down because they don't trust you to pay your monthly bills. You know, the list just goes on and on and on about how the rest of your financial life gets more expensive. So I promise you that like the cost that you think you're saving for your student loans is going to be made up for <laughs> in the higher cost of everything in your life and the opportunities that you lose and things. And then here's a scary stat too, right? Uh, if you get your wages garnished, guess what? Uh, you can get fired um, if you get your wages garnished. So if you have two wage garnishments, your employers are legally allowed to fire you in every state. If you work for the government, you can lose your security clearance. And this is important for the military members and other government people. And guess what? If you lose your security clearance, they're firing you too. So like, there's just so many financial repercussions and like business repercussions that can come from not paying your student loans. It's just like, don't do it, especially with what I know we're going to talk about later with all these new repayment plan options and different things that can help you. So just please don't not pay your student loans. It's literally the worst financial move you can make. Yeah. Well, I mean, outside of the financial things that you just said, which are heartbreaking, 
emotionally. That's got to be mm-hmm. tough to carry on. And we're talking about social security. Let's just say, I'm never going to pay it. And then like, they're starting to take your social security down the road. Can you imagine holding on to these things for 10, 20, 30 years and just feeling like this weight on your shoulder forever? Well, I mean, you know, the worst part too, is the social security stuff actually isn't even for like young kid borrowers. You know, where that usually comes into play is a parent mm-hmm. that thought they were doing well for their kids. Like, oh, I'm going to you know, borrow money for my children's education. And then look, they hit retirement and they can't afford it. And they're garnishing your social security. And it's like heartbreaking because, mm-hmm. and I know we'll probably talk about this later too, but it just adds to the family drama and the dynamic. And it's very hard. Absolutely. Well, okay. Well, let's, let's, that's the doomsday let's right there. Something positive, let's let's right? talk about some options. Let's say, okay, well, I've got that $300 payment that's going to come up. And honestly, Robert, things are pretty tight for me right now. And inflation's, you know, yeah, it's slowing down, but it's still up there and it's hurting me. $300 is going to be tough for me. What are my options? Well, first off, uh, you know, let's frame this in a few ways, but there are a lot of different repayment plans for borrowers. If you are one of the 20% of borrowers that have never made a payment before because you graduated in the last three years, (laughs) you default into the standard 10-year monthly payment plan. And that plan is actually the highest amount that you could possibly pay every single month, which is that's probably how you're getting a $300 a month payment. Um, Because let's be honest, that's actually pretty high with these new repayment plan options. And you might have heard of this cool thing called SAVE. It's saving on a valuable education. It's actually the newest student loan repayment plan, and it just started back in July. So sadly, a lot of people don't know about it yet, but it has the potential to cut your student loan payment in half. And I was doing a little math before the show, but to get a $300 a month payment as a single adult in this country, you would have to make almost $100,000 a year. So you're making pretty good money to even have a a $300 a month payment on this new save repayment plan because it's based on your income and it's set at 5% of your discretionary income, which is half of what the current plans are. The current plans are either 10% or 15%. And so, you know, to have a big payment like that means you're, you're making decent money. Maybe your budget's tight. I get it. But a lot of borrowers on the save plan are going to have a $0 a month payment. Uh, If you make under $38,000 a year as a single uh, person or $65,000 a year as a family of four, your monthly student loan payments could be $0 a month under the save plan. And so like, yeah, I know the debt is stressful and it like doesn't feel good to see that balance there. But when it comes to your monthly budget, it's not hurting you at all. Yeah, those are those are good options to consider. And as you said, I think it's got a PR problem because I think more people need to hear about it in order for them to consider what that can do if they stretch this out and then take advantage of new programs like this. Let's jump back to the parents that are listening that maybe did the Parent PLUS loan that they're attached to. Did those start resuming back in October as well? Yes, they do. So mm-hmm. Parent PLUS loans resume. So there's two sides to the Parent PLUS loan equation. There is the parents that already have these loans. And as you might know, there are very limited options with Parent PLUS loans. Historically, the only real option was the Income Contingent Repayment Plan, which is the least affordable uh, income-driven plan. It it wasn't that great of one. Um, But there is an option that you can do until the end of the year, and it's called the Double Consolidation Loophole. And this is a good one. It's a little complicated. So like, I'm not going to do it justice on this podcast, but I guarantee that if you have a Parent PLUS loan, look up Double Consolidation. And what you do is you consolidate your loans one time, and then you consolidate them again with a different loan servicer. And guess what? All of this old stuff gets lost in the ether. And so they don't know you had a Parent PLUS loan, and now you're qualified for all of these new student loan repayment plans, like the SAVE plan, different things like that. They've caught on to this, and it's going to go away next year, and they've officially announced that this loophole is closing. But if you have a Parent PLUS loan today, it's an option. But please, make sure you do it right. Google it. Understand what you're doing so you don't mess it up. Part two is if you're a parent and you're looking at your kids paying for college, um, I don't recommend Parent PLUS loans. Please don't do them. I really, really, really hate seeing parents borrow for their kids' education. Because as we alluded to at the top of the show, number one, it's the parent's loan, not the kid's loan. They have no legal responsibility to this. And I think a lot of people don't really realize that. Like the parents think that the kid's going to repay it and the kids don't really know what they're getting into. Because let's be honest, they don't really know what they're getting into with student loans to start with. Um, And then it turns into this like family drama 
um, later in life. And I see it every single day where the parents, like, I thought my kid was going to help me and now they're not. And now I can't afford things. And then the kids are like, I feel burdened because I can't afford this parent plus loan, but like, I feel bad not helping my parents. And like, it really messes up family dynamics. So I really don't like parent plus loans as well. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I mean, these. <laughs> I wish I had you on here for some cheery conversation here, Robert, but a lot of these are, are tough situations. And another not so cheery, you know, piece of news for people who are hoping for that big forgiveness thing. Is there any hope for some sort of forgiveness for people? I know we had some news uh, this, this the recently that that you know, the big idea of the forgiveness is not going through, but are there other avenues? What, what else could people look into? Yeah, you know, honestly, student loan forgiveness is one of my favorite things because, you know, there's no blanket, like everyone gets 10 grand or whatever forgiven. That's not happening. It's not going to happen in the future either. Like, don't buy the narrative. The reason it's not going to happen is because it's illegal. Like, I don't think a lot of people realize this. Like, the president doesn't just have a willy-nilly power to do this. You know who does? If, if you want this kind of program, Congress has that ability. And you could vote in people into Congress that would vote for this. And I'd like to remind everyone because, you know, they seem to think it's like one party or another. Well, you know, the Democrats had both the House, the majority in the House, the Senate and the presidency for a solid couple years, and they didn't do anything about it. So like, don't think it's one party or another that doesn't want to forgive student loans. It seems to be pretty bipartisan. They don't want to do that. But with that in mind, today, with no changes to the law, 50% of all student loan borrowers qualify for some type of student loan forgiveness program. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. So there's a couple big buckets of student loan forgiveness. First off is every income driven repayment plan includes loan forgiveness. So save, pay as you earn, income based repayment, all of these income driven repayment plans include student loan forgiveness, but the timeline's not that sexy. Timeline is 20 to 25 years, and that doesn't feel great. The SAVE plan, though, lets you get student loan forgiveness after 10 years if you have $12,000 or less in student loan debt when you start. So, you know, you get a little bit sooner. But, like, let's be honest. If you graduate at 22, you can be debt-free at 43. Like, you still got your whole life ahead of you. Um, you know, it's not like you're going to be burdened forever. So it's one option. The other program that I love to talk about is public service loan forgiveness. And this program, and it applies to about 13 to 15 million Americans that have student loans, is if you work in public service for 10 years, you get the total remaining balance of your student loans forgiven tax-free. And I, what I love about this program is it's so broad because the definition of working in public service means you could work for the federal government, the state government, local governments, education, you know, local education, higher education, the library, you could work for public safety, like law enforcement, fire department, but you don't have to be like a teacher or a police officer. You could be like the accountant <laughs> at the district. Like it doesn't matter what your actual job is, as long as you're employed in public service. And that's where I think a lot of people don't realize that they might qualify for it because we hear a lot about like teachers qualify, but you know, like the librarian and the assistant and like the principal and like the accountant accountant and the maintenance personnel, like all of them qualify too. And so there's a lot of jobs out there that could qualify for public service loan forgiveness. Um, and it's a great program as well. Excellent. Yeah, these are all great things to look into. And, uh, you know, things that probably aren't talked about a lot because it's not it's not sexy and it requires a little bit of research and uh, investigation to make it happen. Let, let's talk to the person who's just like, you know what, I see that, okay, maybe it would take me 10 years to get those forgiven or 20 or 25 years to forget, to get rid of this. I make a decent amount of money. I've just been putting it off for too long. I'm ready to pay these things off. Give somebody some advice to maybe motivate them to say, how can I get rid of this and then start building wealth so I can put this debt behind me? Totally. So if you have federal student loans, I don't want you to jump the gun and say, I'm going to pay these off right away yet asterisks. You know, <laughs> uh, I got some good rules of thumb for you because I also want to see you build wealth while you're paying off your student loans. And I actually think it's really a possibility for a lot of student loan borrowers. I think they get really kind of burdened in the numbers and don't realize that like student loan repayment can be an opportunity as well. So here's a couple rules of thumb. First off, if you qualify for any loan forgiveness program, you probably should not rush to pay off your student loans. Instead, you should rush to maximize your loan forgiveness and pay as little as legally allowed by law on your student loans. 
And there are some ways to save and lower your student loan payments. Um, so some of the ways that I love is contributing to your 401k or your 403b if you're a teacher. It lowers your adjustable gross income and that lowers your student loan payment as a result, but now you're also building this nest egg alongside of it. You can also contribute to a health savings account or a traditional IRA, and they do the same thing. But now you're not only lowering your student loan payment, you're maximizing your loan forgiveness, and you're building a cool little nest egg for yourself. So, you know, that's kind of one rule of thumb. The second rule of thumb is if you owe more than you make, you're probably better off on one of these income-driven repayment plans like SAVE. And again, the rule applies because SAVE includes loan forgiveness. So if you owe more in student loans than you make, look at these income-driven repayment plans and you're probably better off milking them for the lowest payment possible while you save for yourself. And again, the, the repayment time frame is longer. Yeah, you're going to have to wait till you're like 43, right? But at 43, you'll be debt free and you'll have a positive net worth because like you've hopefully been putting some money in your 401k or your IRA and it's grown for 20 years, right? And so instead of like putting extra to your loans and at 43, you're like net worth zero. Now you get loan forgiveness and you're actually at a positive net worth of like 40K because you had some money in your 401k or your IRA. And I know it's a long time and that doesn't feel great, but that's one option. If you owe less than you make, that's when you start maybe deciding that I should, you know, maybe put some more aggressive payments towards it. Because chances are, if you owe less than you make, you're going to pay off the loans well before your 20 year time frame, even when you're on these plans. And so now it's the time when you're like, oh, I should probably start making a few extra payments, trying to get these loans forgiven or not get forgiven, but paid off as quickly as you can. So that's kind of the framework I use because I want to have people build wealth too while they're paying off their loans. And it's, it's actually a very possible thing to do, but I do think people get so burdened by the number and they're just like, I just want to be debt free. And it's just, it's just like, I get it, but I want to see you be wealthy too. <laughs> I like that. You know, I like how it's not just a one size fits all solution too. you're thinking about these things in different phases or different uh, income uh, abilities for people too. And based on that, really tailoring the ideas to to their situation. Your life changes every three to five years. Like hopefully you're going to earn more money. Like when we were 22 and we just graduated, like we probably earned the least amount of money of our life. And then you earn a little more by your 25 and you earn a little more by your 28. You hopefully get some promotions, change jobs, but it's really hard when you're living in that moment. But like, look back five years ago and see how different your life was than it is today. Right. And so, I mean, I don't want to be like the contrarian here, but that's what the government's betting on. That's why they make it 20 years <laughs> is that they're betting that <laughs> over that 20 year period of time, you start making more and more and more money and that they're not going to forgive as much debt. But, it, you know, it's statistically true, too. So make a plan every year. I just say revisit this every year. So, you know, student loan repayments restarting right now. But then next year, the fall revisit it again um, and see if you're on, if your life's changed, your income's changed, maybe a different plan might make more sense, but like, just keep checking in with it. Like this isn't like a, once you pick it once you're stuck in this for 20 years for life, like you can change it. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a good reminder that, um, this is revenue for the government. They're going <laughs> to want it eventually, and they're going to find really smart ways with really smart people there to, to eventually get it. So I, I completely agree with you. Robert, uh, you have a lot of this great information on all of your your website, your YouTube channel, all over the place. Tell people where they can connect with you and learn more from your brand. Absolutely. So our home base is thecollegeinvestor.com. If you like podcasts, you can find us on your favorite podcasting platform at The College Investor. And if you like videos, we're on your favorite video platform at The College Investor as well. Excellent. Robert, thank you so much for your time today. I have the honor to work with Robert on his YouTube channel and TikTok. We have a lot of fun there. So please support him, subscribe all over the place. I really appreciate it, Robert. Thank you. Hey, thanks for having me. This is great. Thank you.